Okay. So uh, I will mute everybody to start with, and uh, please feel free to unmute yourself uh, when uh, the time will come. So if we can uh, celebrate the, the loveliness, the loveliness of, of being, of presence, this amazing, wondrous mystery. So we say yes to the ease of being. We say yes to it, because there's happiness. We say yes to each other. We say yes to oneself. And we say yes without any need to know why the yes and what will be next. It is enough to simply be this yesness. So let's welcome ourself as one yesness. And we celebrate peace. Causeless peace. By letting go of the past. Letting go of our images about ourselves and about each other. our beliefs about you know, how things should be. The past traumas. We let it go simply in the recognition that it's already gone. And in this moment of presence, of being, you are not a, a mother, a father, a son, a daughter, a husband, a wife. You are none of that in truth, in fact, because you are this borderless aware presence that has no name, no age, no gender, no history. So, can we be with that history? not as a separate body-mind, because that would be the storyline about the body. But to be without history as presence, as awareness. As the reality of consciousness.
peace is not the peace between various factions. Peace is not the reconciliation of various positions. Peace is our reality, not our separate reality, but the reality of consciousness, which we all are. I refers to this consciousness, the reality that perceives, not the body-mind that is perceived, not the images that are perceived, not the memories that are perceived. I refers to that transparent awareness. Check it out. This silent presence is borderless. It does not belong to the body mind. It does not belong to a brain or a mind. This silent presence is formless. Is it not? Within this silent presence, the hearing takes place. Within this silent presence, an image appears, a sensation appears, a sound appears. Is that not so? A sound cannot appear within a sound. A sound does not appear within an image. A sound does not appear with any sensation. And the sensation does not appear with any sound. Everything that appears, appears within this effortless, transparent, aware presence, this moment. Take a look at your experience. The narrative, whatever narrative appears, is a script which appears within this silent, transparent, aware presence. Is that not so? Take a look 
Are you the narrative? Are you the script? Which appears within awareness and disappears. Or are you this transparent, formless, yet undeniable awareness? Awareness is self knowing. It knows it is. It knows that it knows. I know I am. I know that I know that I am. What is this I knows that it is? Is it not awareness? Take a look. Check it out. So that there will be no doubt your experience will speak to you much clearer than these words. As this transparent our presence there are no problems. In order to go to problems, you have to go to I am a mother, a father, a son, a daughter. You have to go to the history. You have to go to the narrative, some narrative, the good and the bad the better and the worse. But in the recognition of yourself as this reality, the transparency of awareness, there is no past and future. There is no narrative, there is no separate object which is lacking and hurting and needing and desiring, hoping, wishing and regretting. Right? So you don't need to maintain the old habit of returning to the me story my life, my body, my age, my money, uh, my neighbor. How am I doing? Am I doing good? Am I doing bad? Am I improving? You do not need to leave your true nature to leave this transparent presence to go to your storyline. And if the storyline uh, story arises, you don't need to maintain it. In other words, you don't need to try to correct it or improve it or get rid of it. Or simply you remain as you are. You turn your attention to the source. The source is not some sort of abstract concept by the source we're referring to that which is real in your experience right now 
check out your experience right now. That which is unchanging, that which is changeless in your experience, is not a male or female thing. It's awareness. That you can count on. That you can always bet on. It's the winning ticket. So you don't need to live your life with a fake currency. Because if you if you base your life on a fake currency, then you have a fake life, a make-belief, a happiness, which is not true happiness. There is nothing make-belief about happiness. The make-belief is your storyline. It's a storyline about you, the mother, the father, the son, the daughter. That's a make-belief that I am the body-mind, is the make-belief. Yes, there is a body-mind, like there is a car in the garage that we take care of, that we use, that we manage. But I am not the car. I am not the body-mind. You don't need to make belief that you are the car, that you are the body mind, that you are the mother or the father. Yes, there is a car, yes, there is a mother, there is a father, there is a son, there is a daughter. But the reality of your experience is this moment, it's always the same reality, which is consciousness, awareness. To know yourself is the highest knowingness and the only knowingness to know yourself. This what Ramana Maharshi used to refer to as I, 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 I. Knowing oneself, self-knowledge. Self-knowledge is not the knowledge about your bank account, about your house, about your relationship with your partner, about your the, the body, that's not self-knowledge, that is objective knowledge. There is no problem with objective knowledge, but don't confuse yourself. Do not confuse yourself to be an object. Not to confuse, confu confuse yourself to be the body-mind, to be something which you perceive, which you experience. And the peace of being, that which you seek, is not in the realm of objectivity or subjectivity, it is in the realm of God, it's in the realm of divinity, of truth. the reality of awareness, of consciousness, which is impersonal, it's universal, it's not a personal form, a personal experience. So in our life, we first seek the understanding, the understanding that I refers to consciousness. The understanding, the primary understanding is that I refers to awareness, the reality, which is and which perceives I awareness, I consciousness. This is a primary understanding.
not that which is perceived, but that which precedes all perceptions and appears as perception while it is formless. That which appears is not an appearance. A big mystery in this understanding that that which appears is not an appearance. How could it be that which appears is not an appearance? When you take a look at the sky, you, you, it appears blue. But the infinite space of what we call the sky has no color. It is not an appearance, and yet it appears as blue. A cloud, a white cloud, a gray cloud. It's just moisture, moisture, the colorless. It, it appears as a white cloud or a gray cloud or a blue cloud. That which appears is not an appearance. Know yourself as the non appearance, the reality of one appearance, which appears as this perception right now, this perception, this moment, is an appearance, which arises out of the non-appearance, like the color blue arises out of colorless space. The primary understanding is I refers to consciousness. And then you need to contemplate that consciousness is not personal. It's not a result of a body, the world, or, or mind activity. Consciousness is not dependent on body mind. So the path is not downstream, it is an upstream path. The path to the source and from the source, the source being consciousness. Okay, so if you have any questions, uh, please uh, unmute your mic and uh, anything that you'd like to explore, this would be a good time to do so. Hello, Magdi. Hello, George. I'd like to ask you to talk more about the body. It's clear to me that I am not my mind, I am not my body. And it's also clear to me that the body is, is an appearance, like my car. But it seems to me that the body is much different from my car, in the sense that if I damage my car, 
I have scratched or whatever, which I've done, I can choose to walk away and let my, you know, let it be scratched. When I injure my body, it reminds me, it hurts. And when I experience that pain, it looks like I had no choice. In other words, I can't at that moment when I'm experiencing pain, somehow walk away from it, and, you know, not have it be. And the other thing I would like to ask about the body is, does the body have any special role in non-duality? For example, I've had some non-duality teachers suggest that I might want to do body work because supposedly emotions are stored in the body. I don't know if that's true or not. No, let's, let's look at one question at a time. Okay, let's look at one question at a time, yeah. okay. So the first question was about, you know, the car and the body that, uh, right. that you know, there is pain that's uh, different uh, than, than banging your car. Yes, the thing to comprehend, uh, George, is that there are various levels of manifestation, various forms of existence. For example, in your village, there are many houses. They all exist. You experience them. You may perceive them or be aware of them. Or you can look at the map and you can see that there are 200 houses in your village. But there is one house which is yours. That house which is yours is also a house like any other house as well, different color, different size, I don't know. I mean, but still, it's, in terms of being a house, it's similar to other houses. It's just a, one form of, of appearance of what I refer to as existence. Existence meaning manifestation. There is a difference between your house and the other houses in that you are the manager, you are more the manager of your house and the manager of your neighbor's house, although you also are the manager of your neighbor's house. You, you cannot uh, uh, go light a match in, in your neighbor's house, you know. But there, you also are indirectly in a, in a certain way, in a certain manner, uh, also have a responsibility towards your neighbor's houses and the houses in the village. But with your house, there is a more uh, specific relationship. But nonetheless, it is a, uh, I would say, it's a relationship with a certain appearance. So you take care of your house, you mow the grass, you fix the door if it needs to be fixed, you fix the roof if there is any leak, etc. You don't do that with your neighbor's house. You only do it with your house. We may choose not to fix the leak of the roof and then, then you, have, you may have to replace the flooring also because the flooring will warp. You may choose not to replace the flooring and then you may have to replace your wife because your wife leaves. <laughs> just, just kidding. <laughs> it's your freedom. Yes. So there is a certain. There are certain relationships, and you have your freedom. You, you actually, you have your complete freedom. Similarly, with your body, you have your complete freedom. There are some uh, folks who feel some pain and respond to it to the, with the, within the body, they respond in different, ma in different manners. But uh, while the, the effect of ignoring a leak in your roof takes quite a while to uh, notice in, with the body, if you have a, a pain, the effects of living with the pain or ignoring the pain are much faster to be noticed. <laughs> Something else will 
an infection and then it leads to something else, etc. And the knock on your door is a closer, but it's still a knock on the door in terms of there is a similarity in a way between uh, taking care of your house and taking care of your car and taking care of your body. There is a similarity at a level and there are differences at other levels. The main thing is that the relationship is between I consciousness and a certain form, the house, the car, the body, etc. The thought. So when a thought arises to you, it's different from a pain in the body, but it's also it's arising to you. And you can ignore the thought. For example, the thought may be Gee, I, I don't think I turned the gas off, you know, on the pasta before coming to, to the satsang. You may ignore this thought. <laughs> it's also a form, an appearance. But the consequences of ignoring the thought may result in some issues in the kitchen or in the house. You know. So the main point I wanted to share with you, George, is that yes, although uh, there are levels of manifestation, some are closer and some are more, the consequences are more noticeable and more, uh, more uh, uh, bigger, yeah, than others. It's still in the realm of, of experience, of existence. Uh, now, the core issue in non-duality is the belief that I am the body, that I am the body-mind. It could be that one of the ways in which we feel that we are the body mind is because of this urgency when there is hunger okay you can you can go with hunger for a day maybe two days after three days it's like okay you know i gotta eat you see but with your car if there is a dent on your car yeah i'd like to fix the car you know it's june july and yeah, august maybe maybe in september you get sick of it and you will fix the car you see it could be that because at the body level the, the knock on the door is so much louder and closer that we feel we are the body. But think about it. You are perceiving the pain. You are perceiving the body. You are perceiving a sensation. You are perceiving an image. You're perceiving something. You perceive the oak tree, but you are not the oak tree. You perceive the body, yes. I mean, it could be a really close standing, you know, Nose to nose with you, <laughs> as a way, you know. But still, it's a perception. What is it that perceives? The body does not perceive the body. So I cannot, cannot be that the body is perceiving. Something perceives, which we refer to as I. Not with this moment. In this moment, there is a perception. Turn your attention to the that which perceives, it's transparent. There is no, the eye cannot see itself. You know that, that metaphor, the eye cannot perceive itself. But yet there is perception. You cannot deny that you are perceiving this perception or hearing these words. What is it that's perceiving? Is it the instrument? Is it the body that's perceiving? I perceive. What is it that is I right now? What is that experience of I-ness? What you're experiencing this I-ness right now, this whatever the words are, the experience of presence, the experience of awareness. Is that not your experience of awareness? Yes, it is. And it also seems that a big difference between the body and the car is, as you say, the body is the instrument of perception. Yes. 
but the car isn't, you know. I mean, I understand, you know, that, that th there's that, I think somehow that seems to make a big difference. I'm not sure. Yeah, with the senses, you see, so the, the body is the instrument of the, of the sense of perception, but yet you cannot perceive downtown without the car. You need to go, to, you need to drive downtown to perceive downtown. So indirectly, <laughs> the car is also part of the deal, you know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but th that's rather indirect. I mean, yes. the, body, the body is the instrument of perception always. It's the only instrument of perception, isn't that correct? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, the primary instrument of perception. But but I could not, I could not perceive you right now without this laptop, without the use of this laptop in this moment. Right, but you certainly more, you, but you also need your eyes to perceive me. Gotcha, gotcha. Ears. Yes, yes, right. I'm, on, I'm on board with you. I'm just saying that, yes, the, the senses of the body are, I'm using the word primary. Yes, yes, they're okay. obviously, yes, the answer is yes. And I just, I'm just taking it a step further to say, okay, well, don't be so stuck on that. You know, look at your experience. In your experience, yes, absolutely, the body is the key instrument of the, of the senses. But, uh, but there is more to it than just that, and the proof right, right. the proof is in the pudding right now. In that, you know, this this computer, you know, with that with that this video, um, whatever. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but you see, the thing is, yes, yes, the the body is the instrument of perception of the world, the senses, and and, and the thoughts, the mind. Instrument. But it's not the instrument which perceives. No, I, it is I, not the instrument that perceives. Isn't it? And we no, have. I, I, I get that. Yes, and that we have the direct experience right now of awareness. Because there is a reality to this experience right now. And that reality is the reality of awareness. It's not a concept. Awareness is not a concept. It's our direct experience this moment, every moment. Right. But because it's not a, it's not visible on this at the sense level, at the sensory level, from the sensory level, we say, well, okay, we're looking at something. We say, well, it must be the body. You see? So the, the exploration is is up to the source, not not. So the, the, the contemplation is what is it that truly perceives. Obviously, there is perception right now. What is it that truly perceives? What is the reality of this moment? Is it the sounds and the waves and the sensations? Okay, so I think I get your point in that the body is the principal means of perception in the sense of hearing and smelling and all that stuff. But the knowing of awareness does not require the body. Is that what you're Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. Because right. you know that you're aware. Right. Which is different from I know that I'm hearing these words. Yes. There is a, a non, let me say, non-material knowingness, and there is a material knowingness. The material yes. knowingness is I know that we are speaking English, I know that I'm speaking with George, etc. That's the as a way of speaking the material knowingness. There is a noumenal knowingness, a non-phenomenal knowingness, which is that I know I'm aware. Awareness knows itself. Okay, very good. Thank you. Do you want to? Take the second question, yes. or I just yes. let someone else what, take that turn. What was okay. the second question? The second question is, there are, what is the role of the body, special role of the body, if any, in non-duality? Yes. For example, yes. some teachers have suggested uh, it might be useful for me to do body work. So uh -huh. somehow, as, as I, somewhere on the path of non-duality, and I don't quite understand that. Yes. 
Look here, a couple of things. The body, the body mind, is a canary, the canary in the coal mine. The more you're proceeding in the wrong direction, the more uh, the canary is suffering, is, is, is uh, to, uh, getting uh, to the asphy asphyxiation, to the asphyxia asphyxiation. Asphyxiation, yes, you're yes. right, yes. So you experience happy unha unhappiness and misery in via the body mind because you are moving in the wrong direction, the direction of separation, the direction of personal personal realities, multiple realities, the separate me, my life, my money, my tribe, my woman, my children, my religion, whatever. And the more you follow in that direction, the body serves a function of telling you, okay. All right, George, okay, this is a squeeze, okay. But you continue, then the squeeze intent increases. Increases, the squeeze increases, increases. At some point, uh, you say, I cannot take it anymore. So the body mind is part of the play, part of the God's grand design of the, the play of for forgetfulness and recollection forgetfulness and remembrance. The body serves the function of uh, the canary in the coma. So it's about happiness. We often say that uh, in the full understanding of your true nature, you're, you're experiencing peace and happiness, peace and happiness. It's not that you're experiencing a perfect body, there's no more pain or anything like that. But you, uh, the body becomes a body of transparency, the mind becomes a mind of peace and wisdom, and the world becomes a world of beauty. So there is a, a shift upon the recognition of your true self, you know, from the body being a, a bundle of knots uh, that time bombs <laughs> uh, to uh, a transparent body. In terms of the body work, you, know, you need to do some body work, you need to do some body work. The body work is the following in the non-dual understanding. First, there is a recognition that the body is an appearance, that I experience the body as images, and sensations, and perceptions, that the body is an appearance. And that all appearances appear and disappear from moment to moment. So there isn't one body. There are infinite bodies, as a way of speaking, because there are infinite appearances and disappearances, infinite thoughts and memories. Even the thought that says, I am the same body. <laughs> Even that thought disappears as soon as the next thought comes. Mm, I feel like having some ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that the same thought arises again, oh, I am the same body. The fact that the thought may appear again and again and again does not, uh, it's not the evidence that of how th things are. It's just a, another thought arising, appearing and appearing and appearing. Uh, so the, it's important to understand that the body is, is not one body. There is no actual, an actual body that you can sort of put your finger on and says, hey, here it is, boom, I got it, this is it, this is, there is a, there is a body, boom. Because a minute later it slipped from your hand, it's like trying to catch your fish. <laughs> 
in terms of body awareness or body exercises, the body awareness is very important. But the body awareness has to be uh, done under the, the guidance of uh, a, a sage, a sage being a person who is now this transparency, is, the, is this living transparency. So the body awareness or body exercises are um, the simulation, the simulation exercises that simulate your true body. Of course, in a way one could say you already are your true body, but another way you know you're not because you are the fictitious body of your mind that you imagine yourself to be and you feel yourself to be. So there are exercises that can guide you to experience the body as that vast transparency, as the cosmic body, as the universal body. And these exercises uh, are not the repet repet repetitive exercises. They are original in that there isn't a you who is, re who is repeating something. Because the you who is repeating something is a contradiction to the body awareness. In the body awareness, you you become the spacious the spaciousness. So the, it's a it's a uh, turning your attention. You get various skills to the formless and borderless body, which is the universal body of consciousness, the cosmic body. Um, I do not know of many people, I, I cannot count on, on one hand the people that I would uh, recommend for this sort of, uh, for the, those yogas. But I would point you to the students of Jean Klein who uh, was a, a master in this sort of these sorts of yogas? Um, uh, of course, Francis Lucille, uh, 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 Rupert Spira. There is a, in, another fellow in England. I forget his name. And I think that also Eric Berry, there are a few people, a handful of people that uh, maybe Ellen Emmett, uh, Rupert's wife, are people that uh, could, could guide. So yes, uh, George, uh, it's very important for the understanding about consciousness to become your living experience and for your, for your illusory body to be healed uh, by the cosmic body. Yes. Okay, I, I appreciate your answer. And I have to admit, I don't quite get, it's fine. I would, we don't, maybe I don't need to get it. But for example, I don't know what you mean by the cosmic body. I also looks like if the body is like a canary in the coal mine, to see we're going in the wrong direction, let's fix the canary. That doesn't make sense. No, no. <laughs> okay. No, it's, um, it's not about fixing the canary. No, of course not. Okay, I'm just trying to show, show you some of my confusion, but I think I think you by and large answered my question. Wish it. 
Yes. Uh, I'm going to interpret your answer as saying, forget about it, George. The second part of your question, uh, it, it has to be experiential. Uh, um, okay. So you can sort of get a little schematic of what I'm saying, but it's, it's an experiential uh, part of of the of the southern. Okay, very good. All right, thank you, Maggie. Thank you. Yeah, I think when uh, people attend uh, attend the Francis uh, Lucille retreats uh, during those retreats, he uh, uh, teaches those those uh, yogas. Great, thank you. Okay, Charles. Any questions? Any questions? Hello, Anna Maria. Hi, Magdi. Um, um, my question is, do you believe that uh, by all that you said, even if I don't do these exercises, but I just practice consciousness, uh, it would for sure affect the, the experience of the body-mind. What do you mean by practice consciousness? One of my joys of being present in your satsangs is that I get reminded of truth, um, the world of appearance, of uh, identity and all that takes its place as a background. Yes, yes. Um, you know, uh, when when Atmananda Menon was asked about what is the final destination, whichever way the question was asked. He replied, when no events in the world and no events in the body and no events in the mind take you away from the peace, then when Francis Lissiros asked this question, he said, well, when you are happy, and then he said, well, when you are 99.99% of the time happy. Uh, so, you know, better than anybody else, you know, so you do not compromise for almost almost you continue your contemplation you continue whichever way your life is appearing to you whichever way the teaching is um, is appearing to you the significance that it has to you in this moment 
you lose that. You, you continue to, to live, you know, your love for truth, your love for causeless happiness, your love for universal peace. You continue, and that's, so you live your life as your life is, is unfolding. I answer the questions that are posed to me, uh, but all what we need is available to us in our life as consciousness. So in terms of your question about, is it enough? I would say for whom? Uh, is when you are in the rose garden, you smell the roses. Is it enough to smell 10 roses when you're on third? Maybe it is. I don't know. When you feel like sitting down, there's a bench around, and you feel like sitting down, you sit down on the bench and you enjoy the rest, resting on the bench. And you feel like getting up again, you get up again. You may leave the rose garden, go to the market to buy tomatoes, to have maybe salad. Life is, is an unfolding, it's a mystery. And whatever unfolds doesn't disturb and doesn't touch the reality of consciousness. And so you, on one hand, you, you are the floor, you lift the floor. And on the other hand, which is not two hands, the same hand, you are this piece of being. And that is what you recognize as the precious, the precious, uh, the jewel, the precious jewel is the inner piece of being. It's not the personal piece, it's inner, but in a way it's, it's not personal. And when you are living uh, as best you can, your love for truth, whatever is needed appears to you in a certain timely fashion. So it appears out of, out of, we don't know where, and here we are. So it's, it's what we refer to as grace, you know, as grace. And, uh, so we recognize that when we say yes to that, we say yes. It's also beautiful. Any questions? Okay, well, thank you all. Very lovely to be with you. As always, George, Trish, Trish, Francis, Trish, Anna Maria, Holger, Holger, Mina, Grace. Hello, Grace. Hi, Maggie. Thank you. Yes, Richard. Boy, a lot of books there, Richard, behind you. <laughs> Patrick. Hello, Patrick. Too many, Maggie. Huh? I have too many, probably. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Frank. Okay, lovely to see you, Frank. And Karen. Hi, Karen. Holly. Hello, Holly. Isaac. Hola, Isaac. John. Nice to see you, John. And H. Dudela. Uh, okay. Hello, H. Dudela. And Pauline. Hello, Pauline. Thank you all. Thank you, Mike. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Maggie. Bye. Everyone. Bye. Bye.